Hey guys, so let's see how the diabetics ML model is made. I'm Rohan and welcome. Hope you understand this project and uh, uh, this project as basics, okay, not to the final model building phase. But then you can proceed with this project and you can build your model with your own. But I'm going to show you all till the uh, basics of how to build an ML model for prediction of diabetics. So let's go. Yeah, guys. So here, prediction of diabetics using diabetics data set. So here, uh, we are using this data sets. Actually, diabetes data sets will be available online through many websites. So they're, they're open to anyone to use. And uh, I actually took it from Kaggle. You can take it from anywhere you want. Okay, so let's proceed. So I'm using this warnings. Okay, warnings because uh, you know when I start executing the code, I get a big big warnings. Okay, like a description warning and all those things. So that uh, this these are warnings which are not necessary, but then you should be aware of them. Okay, so to not display this, I'm using this warnings library. Okay, and pandas pandas are the very important libraries. They are used for uh, basic ma manipulation and uh, uh, data. Uh, visualization or uh, data analysis and then matplotlib matplotlib is very important for visualization and it does basic visualization okay there is one more there is one more library called seaborn which also is uh, used for plotting and doing visualization but this seaborn does the advanced visualization so here we are using matplotlib for basic visualization and numpy numpy is nothing but an array we use it like an array here we can see that we have used data data as a bucket or something like which stores this value of data sets into data okay we are using pandas dot read csv to read the data sometimes in your system this might not work so you have to put r or something like that if windows r or else if apple or something you can use backslash or uh, uh, you can you can just go out how to import the data this is not the big thing and then the shape dot shape data dot shape so we have imported the data right so the data dot shape gives us the shape uh, shape in the sense the number of rows and columns this is a, we, here we have 768 rows and 10 columns so dot info gives us all the number of columns along with their names okay actually dot shape is not required this is itself enough we can judge all the data sets so in this we can find out all our integers except bmi and diabetes spread okay and then diabetes i think this is the bool value which is true or false value okay and i i think this is the one which we are going to predict okay so let's see we don't know that okay so let's see data dot describe gives us all the description of the numeric values so here you can see bool is not being dis uh, described here so therefore it only gives the output of numeric even string won't be displayed here only numeric values will be able to display here so here we can see that count these are the values number of rows and then mean mean is nothing but the statistics we use mean as an um, average as mean so it's, it's both are same and standard deviation it gives us how spread out the data are from each with each other or the variance in the data square root of variance is nothing but standard deviation minimum values and the maximum values and here we can see that dot head data dot head gives us the top five rows with all the columns so here this is also a very good step to judge what type of data we have so yes now it's confirmed that we are gonna predict for diabetes okay so this is this is gonna be our predictor and this is gonna be our source for prediction okay and null value is very important thing okay one of the very important thing actually data cleaning is a big step very huge process here we have done very less actually there are many things like outliers and removing outliers and all those things so here we uh, we are removing uh, we are just checking for null values okay so we got the output as false 
which tells us that there are no null values and you can use either this one or this one if in case this is true we can use dot sum okay instead of dot values dot any we can use dot sum so here we get the sum of this thing for example we have missing uh, I mean we have null values for thickness so it shows us how many null values are there in thickness okay and this is also a very important thing this is the uh, data correlation okay it gives us the correlation of the data with the heat map this is using this plot is done using uh, seaborn and the sizing using uh, matplotlib the size of this is you can see a 20 by 20 which is done by using matplot and then this is plot is done using c1 so one over here is not considered don't consider it because it's diabetics against diabetics you can find out a lot of insights with this for example you can see this skin and age as a good correlation skin and number of preg glucose and age yeah so you can find out which has more correlations and which has very less correlations the same thing in visualized format is converted to tabular format okay you can see this 0 0.22 okay also you can see 0 0.22 so this is this is the simplest form to understand and this is the visualized form to understand the correlation is the main very important thing guys and then changing the data diabetics column data from boolean to number why number why are we changing true to one and false to zero because the machine learning algorithms only understand numeric values okay the machine understands numbers not letters or words okay actually in the background even letters and words are converted to numbers and then understood by the machines therefore we are converting true to one and false to zero okay and then yeah uh, diabetics map we are mapping all the data is true as one and false as uh, zero to diabetics column so this column here you can see here we have used a dot head uh, this phi is not required because uh, by default it prints out uh, phi rows and uh, all the columns so you can see the diabetics it's really replaced as true as one and false as zero okay uh, we can see in the previous thing yeah true as one false as zero okay we have successfully done it and then let's check how many true values and false values we get output as 268 true values and 500 false values that means 268 people out of so many data uh, out of so many records have true values and 500 as false values so the computer understands this and understands all the data like people who has uh, false values and people who have true values and then it predicts so test rate and split data this is uh testing and training so here we are splitting the data into two okay this is a very important method so we split these things by test and train okay so features are split into all these columns and then uh, prediction has been uh, assigned to this column okay so these are the values so here we have split the data into 30 percent 30 percent in the sense test value is 30 percent okay so this is i uh, should run it from first but then this okay and let's check how many missing values are there okay so there are a lot of missing values as we see here And then from sklearn.preprocessing, import imputer. So here we are using imputer to replace the missing values with the mean values. Okay, understood? So example, we have five missing values here. So we are replacing all these five missing values with the mean value of this column. Okay. So it's it, it'll be almost uh, same. Okay, so it doesn't give uh, much error. So we are filling all the values. And this is a array. Now we are applying the algorithm. Okay, random forest classifier. 
so we'll check whether this algorithm is capable or what we have applied it and yeah guys i didn't run that error code to show you all why i used the error code because see here we get description warning okay so here if we use description warning so this full pink block over here won't be displayed you will get directly this answer okay so in random forest we get 0.719 which is 71% accuracy uh 71% is okay but we i am expecting more than 75 or 80 because it will be a right fit then this is slightly underfit model underfit model is a model which is which shows a very wrong values and overfit model is something which is very strict here we don't want both underfit or um, overfit so we need a right fit model so we are using parameter hyperparameter tuning okay we use this tuning for making our machine to understand better of these data sets okay so these are all the parameters parameters of uh, tuning learning rate and all those things so here we are using hyperparameter optimization using random search cv so what this does is it searches for the best uh, uh what is it parameters and gives us the output so we are using xg boost so random search we are including this thing and then we are using the time to see which runs very fast okay time taken and hours and minutes and seconds okay so this this full thing is a user defined function okay this is a user defined function for calculating the time okay time run okay so again we have errors errors so here we get five folds for five candidates okay time taken 04 minutes and 11 seconds to run okay so this is the best one so we are taking all these parameters into consideration okay so the best estimators so we can see here the best estimators is given here so this is one which we are going to use these are all the uh, parameters which we are going to use in the classifier okay so here we are going to xg boost dot fitting the model and then cross validation cross validation is something that you split the model at uh, we can see in the beginning we split the model into two 70% and 30% cross validation thus split the model into more into three parts not two parts but three parts and then checks the accuracy and then if the accuracy is good then it checks it for test model so here we have tested all the this thing types of uh, parameters and then we get one parameter as 81.57 which is a very high accuracy okay so we found this one so this is what we want so till here we have achieved the best model 81 is the best model okay the 10th cv okay so the 10th iteration is 81 so this is going to be your fixed uh mod uh, machine learning model for our deployment and dot main gives us the mean value of all these things so mean value is 73 but then we have uh, the final value which is more more than 73 which is a very good thing so this one we are going to export as a database model okay so this database model uh, is used for deployment okay and this is done by importing pickle file okay pickle library file which this one stores the library file as database ml dot pickle okay so this pickle is uh, being exported into your uh, local storage so that while deploying we use this pickle file in our code to deploy okay and the deployment thing uh, it's 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 very easy guys you can do the deployment thing or else it's coming soon so i'll just be showing you all how to deploy in my next video thank you so much and then this this code is entirely in my github so please be free to go to my github and download this code and edit it by yourself use more visualizations see i have used only this one there are many many more visualization things use visualizations I have not done EDA, so you can perform EDA, exploratory data analysis and data cleaning, in-depth data cleaning, 
and also uh, testing out different uh, models on your data there are many things you can do please experiment with this if you are a starter this helped me a lot actually as a starter uh, it helped me a lot but then now i'm very familiar with these things i can proceed for the advanced things this is a little easier things so thank you guys the link is in the description enjoy have a great day